Hi, so we have our latest ISO 27002, the guideline for implementing the ISO 27001. It has undergone a revision um, this particular month, February 2022. Now let's take a look at what has been changed as a part of the guidance. Now, having said that, ISO 27001 is not expected to undergo, undergo any change now because uh, the ISO 27002 addresses the statement of applicability, the annexure A, part of ISO 27001. So the Subramaniam Shankaran from Information Security Strategic Solutions from UK. Now you can download this guidance document from um, uh, iso.org. It is a link, I will share this link on the description of the video. So if you want to buy it, you can actually buy it. So ISO 27001 is the certifiable standard, okay? so. Um, irrespective of the organization, okay, the applicability will be different. For example, ISO 27,017 is for the cloud security, 27,034 is for application security, 35 for the security incident management. Now, all these things are uh, guidance documentation and your certifiable standard is going to be ISO 27,000. Ideally, uh, a good consulting organization uh, will implement, uh, will consider all this guidance documentation for implementing ISO 27001 uh, or towards your ISO 27001 certification for your organization. So 27002 contains the best practices or set of security controls okay, to improve your security and what has changed in the statement of applicability, rather ISO 27002 okay, from the previous uh, version 2013. So we had 114 controls okay, in 2013 version, but um, we have, it has come down to 93. In fact, um, uh, the 2005 version had much more, uh, much more larger control. For example, the number of controls was close to 134. Then in 2013, it was brought down to 114, and now it's 93. So the, it has been grouped under four categories. If you start looking at uh, the site, so we have got uh, the um, uh, normative references, organization controls, okay? And then we have got uh, people controls, we have got physical controls. Like obviously we cannot start looking at this remote working, teleworking, the term has been remote. It is remote working now. So obviously we cannot, uh, without buying it, we cannot look at what the control is. So we have got the uh, uh, physical control, we have got the uh, people control, okay, technological control, yeah, this all technological control. So organization control is actually on the uh, top. See, organization controls. So they have grouped into um, the four categories, organization, people, technological, and physical, okay? So in fact, um, in a way, we call uh, the people as layer eight, because all the, uh, we have seven layers on the OSA, so the layer eight is people, they're all the people. So the security is as strong as the weakest link. Usually the weakest link is the human security chain, okay? So uh, human security link is a part of the, uh, the security chain. So addressing the uh, people will become the layer eight and layer nine is actually the organization. That's where the 37 controls falls. And uh, layer 10 is actually the country. The country is gonna have um, you know, a good physical security standards or laws. Okay, so uh, the organization will follow it and people have to follow it and they can implement it technically and physically to ensure that they are secure. Okay, the physical control is more towards the, um, you know, the management or the movement of the assets from uh, inside within the organization to the uh, to external or to outside the organization and to also ensure that your organization is secured against the intruder and the natural calamity. Now, the technical control is to uh, ensure that the, your data exfiltration, infiltration, they're all controlled. The infiltration is mostly towards, uh, you know, the malicious traffic not hitting your infrastructure. Okay, the DDoS attacks and uh, uh, malwares, et cetera. And the exfiltration more towards the DLP. People, again, um, the um, we need to secure them physically and also we need to ensure that they are made aware of uh, um, uh, the social engineering security, which is, the core of the security awareness session. So we should also tell them about disciplinary action if they don't follow the security standards. And obviously the organization, okay, we cannot um, uh, let the employees do, um, or the, what do you say, the, um, uh, the lowest or the one above them, okay, do all the activity and uh, uh, not do anything is not a part of the management. Management is still accountable and the responsibility is with the rest of the teams. 
So ideally, the CISO should be accountable or CDPO should be accountable, CDPO for the GDPR anyway, and CISO for ISO 27001 and other security standards as well. So organization has about 37 controls okay, using which they have to uh, engineer the security in the organization. And the technology controls will fall into the organization control. People have to implement that. And uh, mostly the security around the people is to the human uh, resources security and uh, uh, their training, et cetera, as uh, screening them for the background and all these things will come. Yeah, and the physical security is against uh, natural calamity as well as uh, to keep the intruder at the bay. So these are the groups for ISO 27002, the latest standard. New control is for the threat intelligence, and obviously the threat intelligence is also a part of your penetration testing. MITRE, the attack framework, okay, is one of the best of the frameworks for the threat intelligence for the organization. Information security for the cloud services, this has been touched upon in ISO 27002 with the popularity of uh, the cloud and the cloud security, though there is a guidance document for ISO 27017, okay, but um, as, as a part of the statement of applicability, the earlier version did not touch upon that explicitly, but ISO 27002 is touching upon that explicitly, the, the latest revision. And IT development's readiness for the business continuity, the business continuity with respect to the infrastructure, okay, IT infrastructure. Okay, we are not speaking about the, um, the building and again, the supplier for uh, um, stationary, no. There is a business continuity and we have a separate standard called ISO 22301. Uh, for the, the overall business continuity. But what is being touched upon here is the business continuity with respect to the in information technology. Physical security monitoring, the CCTV cameras and physical security guards, okay? And all these things will come under this uh, control. And um, the physical security is not really implementing it, okay? So we all know that there are uh, six different uh, uh, types of controls, right? So we have something called as an uh, deterrent control, preventive control. Deterrent control is to discourage and preventive control is to stop somebody. And then we have uh, corrective control, the recovery control. Okay, and then we have detective control. We have what is called the compensating control. Ideally, irrespective of your security, whether it's going to be a uh, physical security or technical security, we need to have uh, these six different types of controls to be implemented. Configuration management, for me, is a beautiful control to be touched upon. Because you know your change advisory board should be linked to the configuration management, okay? So that any documentation that has been changed or anything that has been changed in the organization, including the uh, IT, okay, or including you know the physical infrastructure, needs to have a proper change that is approved, okay? And uh, even if you don't categorize them as a configurable item, but it's always better to have the complete change management. And wherever the configurable items are involved and configuration management comes into the picture, okay? And CMDB is also obviously a part of it, okay? And if this is implemented in an organization, I would rather say the organization has got a control way of operations, including the security operations. New controls, information deletion, data masking, so who can delete the information and is it based on um, the aging of information or is it based on request and whether, irrespective of whether the information has been deleted upon the request or the aging, aging of the hardware also, it needs to be approved, okay? So there's a configurable item in there, okay? It could be a source code, it could be a data, or it could be, um, you know, the hardware comes in as a configurable item, right? So we need to have this thing processed as a part of the change advisory board. Data masking, okay, is to ensure that this is a part of the tokenization. Now, touching upon the uh, cloud security as a part of ISO 27002, the data masking has become a very uh, uh, an important part of it. Okay, the part of the data will be masked so that if there is an um, um, uh, attacker, okay, who's going to look at the data and address or data and transit, or including data and use, because there are memory resident viruses. Okay, the data will not be complete. Data will not be visible for the adversary. Okay, the data leakage prevention (DLPs). Okay, and there are tools to implement DLP, but DLP can also be implemented without using any tool, okay? I know a lot of organizations, one is based out of uh, Qatar, the other one based out of uh, India, and, um, you know, they don't have any specialized tool for the DLP, but yes, nobody can access the internet, okay? The external ports are all um, blocked, okay? So they have absolute DLP implemented, but I'm, I'm leaving it to the organization to actually do it because, you know, every organization is not the same. Monitoring activities, SIM will monitor the technical, uh, uh, 
the technical landscape, but the physical landscape needs to be monitored by the building monitoring system team, as well as the CCTV cameras, the multiplexes, etc. Web filtering, ensure that your traffic that is going to get out and get inside, uh, that are filtered, get inside with, to prevent the command injection, uh, SQL injection, or any type of injection for that matter. And your uh, exfiltration of the data will not happen through your web interface. Okay, the web, web filtering should take care of all that. Secure coding, it's a beautiful part, okay? Now, personally, uh, if you, uh, what I feel is, if you want to take care of your application development, uh, security is a part of the application development as a, as a part of your SDLC and testing, uh, you don't need even a WAF, uh, okay, to, as an add-on to your uh, technical infrastructure because your, your application, uh, let's say it's, it's following the uh, CERT, uh, the Computer Emergency Response Team uh, guidelines for the secure coding as released by Carnegie Mellon University. Okay, we want to use those as a practice. Okay, you are taking care of your application in a very secure way. Your application is already secured. So I really, I really don't need an WAF, okay, uh, to secure my application from the adversary, no. Okay, but so secure curing is, an, is a beautiful area and still um, it's an, uh, there are a lot of people uh, need to come on to that particular arena to learn about the secure coding practices and move towards your secure application development rather than the application development focusing only on the performance usability and the functionality. Security is, should also be another limb. Okay, I don't call this as a triangle, I call this as a square. Usability, functionality, performance, and the security. Okay. Attributes. Information, security, property, CIA, or AIC, whatever it is, confidentiality, integrity, availability, but non depreciation accountability, and, um, you know, um, auditing, okay, should happen without saying it. Okay, the people who had been following me uh, for CSSP and who are my students as well, you know, there's something the park here in Hexit, which also speaks about the uh, possession, utility, etc. okay. So the uh, confidentiality, integrity, availability, non-depuriation, accountability, and auditing should also be discussed as a part of the information security. This goes without saying. Attributes, we discussed about uh, deterrent control, preventive control, recovery control, um, um, what is a corrective control, directive control, and what is called the compensating control. Though it explicitly speaks about uh, these three controls, the six controls is what you should consider for the effective implementation of it, ISMS. So your technical competency from the say, security perspective or your governance comp competency from security perspective should come in, okay, uh, for implementing any type of controls. Cyber security concepts should implement the control for identification, protection, detection, to respond and recover. Okay, this is um, inherited from NIST cyber security framework. Okay, attribute, these are the operational capabilities. This is same as your, um, um, you know, the previous uh, uh, revision. So governance, asset management, information protection, human resources security, physical security, system and network security, application security, secure configuration. Okay, it's very important because uh, I also teach people in the penetration testing and uh, Shodan.io is the, um, the Google for the hackers, okay? Ideally not for the hackers, for everybody's benefit. If you want to find a particular IP address of my customer in the showdown.io, obviously I'll get to know the attacker's perspective of an IP address, okay? If it's vulnerable, you can alert your um, customer that, uh, you know, there's a vulnerability or you can help them fix it, okay? If you have a capability or the agreement to actually do so. Now, having found a particular IP, I can also find um, what is the make of it or I can specify the make of it um, in a search for showdown.io and I can find an IP. And if the default user ID and password has not been modified, okay, and the hackers can easily, easily log on. There are websites that also uh, give you the list of uh, default user ID and password for a product specifics, okay. In fact, many of my present penetration testing classes, we have found a user ID and password for the OEMs, uh, instruments or devices, and we were able to log in. Okay, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be that easy. Okay, so ensure that you have secure configuration. I, identity and access management is a beautiful domain. Identity and access management itself is in um, the domain as a part of your CISSP. Okay, so that much of information is available and beyond your CISSP, it itself is a separate certification. 
okay so threat and vulnerability management so vulnerability management most of us know it like you know scanning the the infrastructure using the nessus uh, or nexpos or open west because globally we are a green bone uh, partners excellent tool for performing the vulnerability scanning okay as an exhaustive report this particular product is actually going to give us okay and threat hunting okay we discussed about the mit ire attack framework continuity is going to be a part of your um, um, you know the business continuity with respect to it supply relationship uh, security the separate iso standard for third party uh, controls or third party management also so um, a right to do a pt and right to audit on the third party is something which we should have if you want to outsource your activity to another organization and there should be security complaint otherwise there will become a gateway for the hackers to penetrate your network we don't want to get onto that particular scenario so the uh, third party vendors to whom you are actually going to outsource your uh, activities they should also be security complaint and they should be very serious about security only then they can you can be secure yourself because they are going to be contractually working with you so that should not be a gateway for the hackers to intrude into your network legal okay if you're going to be an um, because there are uh, voluntary complaints mandatory complaints industry specific complaints your mandatory complaints becomes a legal requirement for example if i'm going to implement iso 27001 okay for or any of my customers in the european union i should also look at the gdpr okay with the personal personal identifying information is actually being handled by my customer so that becomes a legal requirement okay for example again who is going to be in um, in abu dhabi or uh, uh, other emirates then i need to look at the nisa for dubai i need to look at the isr for saudi arabia for the bfsa then i need to look at the sama regulations okay all these things will be touched upon by the legal requirement okay so these are the attributes more or less what we had earlier okay security domains okay so we have um, uh, governance and ecosystem so governance speaks about uh, the top management and uh, their uh, raci responsible uh, accountable consultant informed matrix okay for the complete security governance protection defense and resilience so resilience is a way in which you can come back to uh, your working condition as a part of your dr and bcp what will happen to iso 27001 as expected it's not going to undergo revision because um, you know the remaining part of the standard is more or less the same it's a statement of applicability request and a major change because it's uh, more towards your uh, technicalities okay so if you want to be iso 27001 certified write us to us on inquiry at iwrs.org.uk or call us on Plus double four double seven two three four double three one four five. Or alternatively, you can write to me, Subramaniam at itablers dot org dot uk. Okay, stay connected. Subscribe to my channel for the further videos on uh, CISSP or security governance or penetration testing. Cheers and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.